In today's video, we're going to be looking at the GTX 1650 and seeing how it stacks up in 2024. This is a pretty nice looking Gigabyte OC model, has a pretty cool design overall, nothing too insane, but what do you expect for a 1650? The main difference with this model is that it does require a 6 pin power connector. A lot of 1650s usually just take power from the PCIe slot, but this one I guess is a little special, so it needs a little extra power. But other than that, it's just a 1650 and let's see how it does in 2024. The first game we're trying out is Minecraft Java with Optifine. We're running at 1200 distance and 1440p and we're getting about 400 to 660 FPS. I don't see why anyone would have any problems with Minecraft when any hardware within the past like decade and a half. So it really is no surprise that this runs really good and yeah just an overall really solid experience. If you want a high refresh rate 1440p experience there you go. After that we tried some Silder's Vibrant Shaders with extreme volumetric lighting. We're still keeping it at 1440p but we did turn the render scale down to 0.75 and we're getting a pretty solid and consistent 65 to 90 FPS. Now you definitely have some room here to mess with the settings and maybe also try a different shader pack that's not as intensive. Overall really solid experience for anyone who wants to play shaders. A nice budget card to get into Minecraft. Next up we have yet another Minecraft game and it's Minecraft Dungeons. We're playing with the fancy preset at 1440p and we're getting 60 to 150 FPS. Really solid experience here, not much complaints at all. It's definitely an easier to run title but it's still worth noting that you can play some games at 1440p of this card which I understand isn't everyone's desire but it's cool to see this card can do more than you would expect. Overall very nice experience, no problems at all. Next up we have CS2, we're running at the lowest settings in 1080p and we're getting 170 to 250 FPS. This is a highly competitive experience. Really nice if you have a solid high refresh rate monitor and if you have the CPU to back it up you'll get plenty of frames in this game with this GPU. Very nice experience and a very nice budget car to get into some esports gaming. Next we have Teardown at medium settings 1080p and we're getting 45 to 90 FPS depending on what's going on. Very good experience. It's a CPU bound game so the GPU doesn't matter quite as much but it also didn't feel like the GPU was hindering the experience at all so good game to try out on this GPU. Next up we have Resident Evil 4 Remake. We're playing at the prioritized performance preset with FSR 2 on quality 1080p and we're getting 60 to 100 FPS depending on what's going on. Very playable experience, especially for a AAA game like this. Now obviously you have some room here to adjust the settings to get better graphics, but the settings I chose, very very nice experience, very fluid, very smooth. Up next we have some Hogwarts Legacy, we're playing at the medium preset 1080p with no FSR and we're getting 35 to 80 FPS. Pretty good performance overall. The reason that the frame rate does fluctuate a bit is because when you're indoors the frame rate definitely goes up a bit but when you go outside it, it dips down to that lower frame rate. A 40 FPS cap would probably smooth out the experience a bit for you or you could try some FSR too. Overall a good experience on this card, especially for a AAA game like this. Not too bad. Next up we have PAL World, we're playing at the high preset 1080p and we're getting 45 to 75 FPS. Overall it was a very consistent experience and just like Hogwarts Legacy if you have a 40 FPS cap you'd probably would see a very nice consistent frame time or if you prefer higher overall frame rates you can just lower the preset as well. Overall a great experience and I don't really have any complaints here. Now we have Elden Ring and we're playing at the low preset with medium shadows and high anti-aliasing at 1080p. We're getting about 53 to 60 FPS and it's mostly a lock 60. Elden Ring does have a 60 FPS cap and for the most part you will see it stay at 60 consistently. There's some headroom here to mess with the settings a bit if you want a higher graphical fidelity with lower frame rates. But generally the settings I chose I think look good while delivering a decent experience. Good game to play on here. And finally we have Apex Legends at the lowest settings 1080p. We're getting about 100 to 200 FPS depending on what you're doing. It's a very competitive experience and overall the 1650 is just a great competitive esports gaming GPU. There were minimal stutters, everything just kind of ran good without any hiccups. So good game to play on here. Definitely recommend esports on this GPU. Now in conclusion, is the 1650 a decent GPU to buy in 2024? I would say if you get it for a decent price and you just want to play some light esports or maybe some AAA games, it's definitely going to get you by. I probably wouldn't pay more than like 45 or 50 bucks for this GPU, but if you can find it for around that or lower, you're definitely getting a pretty good overall solid experience. Regardless though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye Thank you for watching. Watch.